Hello everyone. I hope all of you are having a good time. So uh, this is the third lecture on motion in a straight line. So in the previous two lectures we have uh, discussed like what is mechanics and what a one dimension, two dimension and three dimension motion right and uh, like uh, we uh, we have also seen scalar and vector quantities right so in today's lecture we will see uh, motion in a straight line all right so uh, i have copied this diagram from the notes that that is provided to you okay so now we consider a body okay at at uh, o at time t equal to zero the body is at o now after time t1 the body is at point p1 after time t2 the body has reached point p2 okay so in time t1 the body has traveled x1 distance and in time t2 the body has traveled x2 distance right so if i ask you like what is the distance traveled by time traveled by the body in time t1 distance or in in time in time t1 distance traveled distance traveled which will be equal to the displacement in this case okay is equal to the displacement all right is how much is x1 okay in time t2 distance traveled which is again equal to displacement is equal to x2 now if i ask you in time t2 minus t1 what is the distance traveled all right so distance travel will be travel will be which is again equal to displacement will be equal to x2 minus x1 we are talking about this particular region now all right x2 is this entire thing and you leave x1 this part is removed this part is removed what remains is this part okay so in the time interval t2 minus t1 the distance traveled is equal to the displacement and that is x2 minus x1 now the question to you people is that why distance is equal to displacement in this case okay any guesses so you see whenever a body travels in a straight line the body is traveling in a straight line right so whenever a body travels in a straight line it doesn't change direction right under that situation the distance traveled is always equal to the displacement because magnitude of displacement in such a case will be equal to distance traveled now we we look at the same problem in a bit different manner okay now the body has traveled from o to p right by by covering distance x2 right now it comes back it changes direction it comes back to p1 okay so in such a case now the present position of the body after traveling uh, till p2 and then coming back okay the present position of the body is p1 right now the question is what is the distance travel okay so i'm not writing down the entire sentence okay uh, that you can uh, see in the notes so in the present case distance travel will be equal to you see x2 was traveled previously since when the when the body went from uh, o to p2 right so I'll be rather writing down OP2 plus P1, P2 because from P2 the body has come back to point P1 again. Now OP2, what is OP2? OP2 is X2 and what is P1, P2? P1, P2 is X2 minus X1. So this is the distance traveled when the body uh, starts from O, reaches P2, comes back to P1. But what is the displacement in the present case? What is the displacement? Now, by definition, we'll see the definition in a short while. By definition, displacement is the is the uh, is the length between the initial and the final point. Is the is the straight length between the initial and the final point. So, what is the initial point here? The initial point is O. What is the final point? Final position. Final position is is P1 here. So, what is the length? The length is x1. Therefore, your displacement in the present case will be x1 okay we put a vector sign because displacement is a vector quantity so i hope this displacement part is clear okay since displacement is the is the length between the initial and the final position the initial position the body started journey from o and finally the body is at point p1 therefore 
the length between these two points is x1 therefore your displacement is x1 now again i give you one more situation okay the other situation is the body has started the journey from o it reached point p2 it came back to it came back to point o again i repeat you started from o you reached p2 by traveling x2 distance right you come back to o again what is the distance what is the displacement you see the distance is actual path travel right length of the actual path travel so you go from o to p2 by traveling distance x2 you come back to o again you travel distance x2 and since you very well know that distance is always a positive quantity okay it cannot be negative distance can be zero it can be positive therefore x2 plus x2 will get you how much it, it will get you twice of x2 so the distance covered is twice of x2 right so i write that down here distance covered is equal to twice of x2 when the body returns to the original point okay from where it is started now what is the displacement in the present case now the initial point is o the final point is o again right so the displacement would be zero in the present case now you see displacement here when the when the body was going from left to right right when when it started from o it reached p2 it covered x2 right the displacement was x2 when it started from p2 and reached o the displacement is minus x2 yes why minus because of the direction so x2 plus minus x2 okay is the displacement in the reverse journey so what is the answer the answer is zero so i hope this is clear these things are written over here very clearly so why this uh, distance was equal to displacement everywhere okay so this statement is written over here you see in one dimension motion magnitude of displacement is always equal to distance traveled when the body is traveling in the same direction this is very very important okay so this uh, discussions are here you you will go through now what is the definition of distance distance and displacement you see distance is denoted by s or x okay now the si unit of distance is meter right so what is the dimension dimension is l or in a standard form you write it as m0 l1 t0 now you write them in third bracket right and you very well know that distance is a scalar quantity distance doesn't have any direction but displacement is a scalar quantity now how do you define this distance it is the total length of the path traveled by an object during a given time okay now distance cannot be negative that that has been discussed already okay now the next definition is displacement now how do you define uh, how do you denote displacement you denote displacement with the same uh, alphabet or the same character that is s or x but you put a vector sign this has to be noted well in every vector quantity you'll have a vector sign this arrow head all right the si unit is meter dimension is l dimension is same but it's a vector quantity okay so the definition goes like the shortest distance between the or the shortest distance from the initial position to the final position of an object is called displacement of an object right so you can see this diagram now before that displacement can be positive it can be negative it can be zero okay so negative will indicate that the uh, journey has happened in the reverse direction okay as in the previous case now you look at this diagram now a body has started journey from a to reach b it takes two path a c b a d b okay it doesn't path along a b mind it now if i ask you what is the distance traveled by the body the distance travel could be acb if the body has traveled along a, a along this path okay and it can also be adb right but if i ask you what is the displacement the displacement would be ab directly all right so this part is clear i i i suppose now the second situation can be say the body has traveled from a to b okay a to b by this path so in this case your distance traveled and your displacement will be same that is ab why because the body is traveling in a straight path okay so here there is no change of direction therefore in the second case your distance traveled and displacement will be equal when the body is traveling along a straight path okay so uh, this point is to be noted here displacement doesn't give the information on the path taken it doesn't tell you about the path taken distance does okay distance tells you about the path taken now the next definition is speed so we have a speed as a scalar quantity and velocity is vector quantity so what addition thing does velocity have in comparison to speed velocity has direction 
it has a speed and direction the magnitude and direction a speed has only magnitude how do you define or uh, like before definition how do you denote speed you denote speed with v you will denote velocity with v with v vector okay the si units will be same in both the cases that is meter per second the dimension will be same that is lt minus 1 a speed is a speed is a scalar quantity and uh, your velocity is a vector quantity okay velocity is a vector quantity now you see uh, how do you define a speed speed is defined as the total distance traveled or total distance covered divided by the time taken to cover the distance all right so speed is equal to total distance covered divided by time taken that is v equal to s by t so this relation is to be remembered okay so just like distance distance can be positive okay distance cannot be zero or negative just like that speed also can be positive but it cannot be it cannot be negative distance can be positive or zero okay distance can be positive or zero just like that speed can be positive or zero but cannot be negative now you can uh, uh, like speed can be or types of speed if you talk about like speed can be uniform speed speed can be variable speed speed can be average speed and speed, speed can also be instantaneous speed now you'll see the difference between all this now when you call something as uniform speed the other word for uniform is like you can say it as constant speed right now you you are traveling along a certain path okay you are you are traveling say from itanagar to guwahati all right so we always take this uh, source and destination as itanagar and guwahati only itanagar to guwahati right now you are traveling by car right so in the first hour first hour or let me let let us consider that you started your journey at 9 a.m right so from 9 to between 9 to 10 a.m uh, you traveled 60 kilometer your your and okay 9 to 10 a.m you traveled 60 kilometer 10 to 11 a.m you traveled 60 kilometer again 11 to 12 a.m you traveled 60 kilometer again so what is the speed of the particular vehicle the speed is 60 kilometer per hour now if you look at it you are traveling what is the time interval here the time interval is okay the time interval is one hour right okay so the time interval is one hour here so it has traveled 60 kilometer in the first hour right here also the time interval is one hour it has traveled 60 kilometer in the third case also the time interval is one hour and it has traveled 60 kilometer all right so you say the vehicle is traveling with a constant speed or uniform speed of 60 kilometer per hour but this is you see this is not the case in reality now if you have to travel from one source to one destination all right if, you, if your journey is spread uh, spread over several uh, hours right so you'll see uh, you start the journey when you start the journey you look at the speedometer the speed shows to be zero okay when 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 the vehicle was at rest it the speed shows to be zero kilometer per hour right now you start the journey the speedometer starts uh, rising okay the speed pointer starts rising like uh, uh, 10 kilometer per hour 20 kilometer per hour 30 kilometer per hour okay again you stop somewhere to buy some you know to eat something in a restaurant maybe in a in a you know in a shop uh, to buy something maybe okay so when you uh, stop the vehicle again your speedometer the pointer comes down to zero again again you start the journey now when you have when you are on the highway you you speed up uh, in the in the optimum capacity of the vehicle like 120 km per hour 130 km per hour as in the case okay so you are having various speed datas initially you started with zero maybe in the first hour like 9 to 10 it was zero okay it was varying uh, of course uh, all across the hour it won't be zero say for a moment you had zero kilometer per hour for a moment you had 10 kilometer per hour sometime you had 60 kilometer per hour sometime you had 120 again you have 30 okay so these are all various what are this these are all various speed values okay so you can say in the, in the present case the vehicle is traveling with the vehicle is traveling with with variable speed okay or non-uniform speed 
Now, this is the case when the, uh, when the situation or the, or the demand for calculation of average speed comes. This is the situation when we calculate average speed. Okay, so we'll come to average speed in a short while. So first let's define. Now let's define what is, what is variable speed. You see, you, you travel unequal distance. You travel unequal distance in equal interval of time. Okay, a body is said to be moving with variable speed if it covers uh, okay, the unequal distance was the second one. Okay, let's see this first. If it covers equal distance in unequal intervals of time or unequal distance in equal intervals of time, you can define it either way. Okay, however small these time intervals may be. So that's what you call as variable speed. Now the third one is average speed. Now when you calculate average speed, whenever a vehicle is having variable speed, you calculate average speed. So average speed is the total distance covered divided by time taken. Okay. Now, if a body is sustainably having uniform speed, okay, then your variable speed and your uniform speed will be equal. That needs to be remembered. What is instantaneous speed? Instantaneous speed is the speed that you see at a certain instant. Instant, what does it mean? It means at this moment, okay. The speedometer, the speed that the speedometer shows you, okay is your instantaneous speed it is the speed of the object at a given instant okay that's what you call as instantaneous speed all right so we have uh, a relation for a, rela uh, a relation for average speed okay i'll just copy this diagram so that i can save some time so now what we are doing we are calculating relation for average speed now you see you start your journey from o all right o at time t equal to zero at time t1 okay we'll have uh, two situations here okay situation number a uh, here distance is given time is not given directly let's write down time is not given directly okay so since time is not given now we consider that the body is at o the body started the journey from o okay it traveled s1 distance now oa is s1 ab is s2 bc is s3 and the total length oc is s okay so the body has traveled s1 with the speed v1 s2 with the speed v2 and s3 with the speed v3 now if i ask you like what is the total distance traveled by the body that will be s1 plus s2 plus s3 right now what is the time taken now since time is not given directly you see speed equal, equals to sp distance by time therefore uh, time equals to distance by speed so if i ask you what is the time taken by the body to travel this is this distance s1 okay what will that be that would be that would be s1 by v1 by by this particular relation yes now what is the time taken by the body to travel the distance s2 that would be s2 by v2 and s3 by v3 for the distance s3 so this is the total distance traveled this is the time taken so what is the relation for average speed it is written as v bar this is bar okay this is not a vector sign so v bar equals to total distance is s1 plus s2 plus s3 and total time taken is s1 by v1 plus s2 by v2 plus s3 by v3 now this is your general relation for average speed this you need to remember okay we'll have a special case now case one now we consider that the body has traveled to two equal distances right s1 and s2 these are equal with speed v1 and v2 okay now since s1 and s2 are equal therefore you can consider s1 is equals to is equals to uh, s2 equal equals to s right now if you consider like we don't have a third distance here we don't have a uh, third segment here therefore in the previous relation uh, the the moment we apply this condition in the previous relation this s3 components won't be there at all okay 
now if we apply this condition in the previous relation therefore v bar will become s plus s right divided by s by v1 plus s by v2 now s plus s gives you 2s in the numerator and here you take s common and 1 by v1 plus 1 by v2 so s s cancels and you have 2 by 1 by v1 plus 1 by v2 right i'm doing doing it a, it a bit uh, it in detail for people there are some people who are there are some students who are you know weak in uh, fraction calculations and all all right so 1 by v1 plus 1 by v2 the lcm would be v1 v2 and here you would have v2 plus v1 right in the numerator you have 2 so this gives you 2 v1 v2 divided by v1 plus v2 right so your average speed calculation comes out to be this okay now you can just uh, do the second case it is done over there i am not showing it that would be for you to try like if if in the same situation in the same situation your s1 s2 and s3 are equal what will this relation be okay you can try that by yourself so you will remember these relations what is the next topic let's see now distance not given directly in the present situation distance is not given directly there is a second case distance not given directly i'll i'll copy the diagram also so now time is given and speed is given time and speed is given okay so the body travels OA in time T1 with the speed V1, AB in time T2 with the speed V2 and BC in time T3 with the speed V3. So what is the like again speed is equal to distance by time so distance is equal to speed into time. Therefore what is the total distance traveled? Now OA will be OA distance it will be equal to equal to V1 T1 right V1 T1 plus AB would be V2 T2 and BC is V3 T3. What is the total time taken? Total time taken is T1 plus T2 plus T3. Now what is the relation for average speed? It's total distance divided by total time. Therefore V1 T1 plus V2 T2 plus V3 T3. Okay. Now divided by T1 plus T2 plus T3. So this is your general, general relation. Okay. Now special case number A. If the time intervals are equal if t1 equals to t2 equals to t3 and you consider them to be as t so you put them in the above equation uh, v1 t plus v2 t plus v3 t divided by 3 t t plus t plus t right so you'll get v1 plus v2 plus v3 divided by 3 so this is the relation when the body tra travels uh, travels uh, with different speed but in equal time intervals okay this will be the relation you can do the other case by yourself that you can try as homework so let's see what is the next topic velocity so velocity is defined as displacement divided by time taken for displacement okay so you need to put this vector signs you need to be careful about this v vector equal to s vector divided by t that is displacement divided by time now direction of velocity is same as that of displacement okay and velocity can be positive zero or negative so just like speed you have uniform velocity you have variable velocity you have average velocity and you have instantaneous velocity okay the last one is instantaneous velocity now you see uh, uniform velocity or constant velocity uh, how do you define it uh, if if a body undergoes equal displacement in equal intervals of time, however small these time intervals may be, so the definition is very similar with the previous one. Variable velocity is also similar. If the body covers equal displacement, previously it was equal distance, mind it. So if the body covers equal displacement in unequal intervals of time or unequal displacements in equal intervals of time, okay. However small these time intervals may be. Now you can have one more definition a body is said to be moving with a variable uh, velocity if there is a change in magnitude or direction or both okay i'll be explaining the second one because uh, the the uh, the previous definition uh, or or this particular definition and also 
the definition for uniform velocity these are similar to the previous definition which are, which have been discussed okay so i'll just focus on this part if a body is said to be moving with a variable velocity if there is a change in magnitude or direction or both okay now you see uh, if there is a change in magnitude of course if a body travels with sometime a body the same body travels with 30 km per hour sometime with 60 sometime with you know 80 sometime with zero so of course the speed is changing and if it's if the magnitude changes obviously the velocity would change even the speed will also change right and uh, the other situation can be a body is traveling with a constant speed but it is changing direction the speed remains the same but it is changing direction in that case also the velocity is variable velocity why because to have a constant velocity you need to have same direction you need to have constant speed but the body is changing direction here since the body is changing direction the velocity is changing right so wonderful example for this situation would be a body traveling in a circular path you see whenever a body travels in a circular path with a constant speed the speed is same say 30 meter per second this is the speed okay this is the speed but here the direction is changing every moment the direction is changing every moment since the direction is changing you'll say that the velocity is changing okay so this is a this is an example a body traveling in a circular path is an example of a motion in which your speed is constant but velocity is changing okay this often comes as a short question and of course if both the thing happens if uh, the magnitude of speed also changes and and the body is also changing direction then also you would call it as a variable velocity okay now again uh, when the when the practical situation is of variable velocity then the need for calculation of average velocity comes okay so it is the total distance divided by the sorry total displacement divided by the time taken for the displacement so v bar equals to displacement by time taken now we have a relation here of course uh, okay let me do it there so what are we calculating here we are calculating average velocity okay we will see the calculation of average velocity now at time t equal to zero okay at time t equal to zero you consider a body to be at o after time t1 the body is at point p1 after time t2 the body is at point p2 okay now if i ask you like what is the displacement during the time interval t2 minus t1 during time t2 minus t1 the displacement of the body would be okay the displacement now you see delta x delta indicates change okay now delta x is equals to x2 minus x1 this is the this is the displacement in the time interval t2 minus t1 now what is the time interval here time interval is delta t equals to t2 minus t1 now if i ask you what is the average velocity that will be delta x divided by delta t okay now delta x is x2 minus x1 and delta t is t2 minus t1 so this is your relation for average velocity the last topic we have is instantaneous velocity So instant, by the word instant, you understand what is instantaneous velocity. So the, the velocity of an object at a given instant of time is called instantaneous velocity. Now you see, a body moving with uniform velocity means that the body is moving with a constant speed, right? In a straight line. Yes, this is what uniform velocity means. In such a case, the instantaneous velocity and the average velocity will remain the same okay so hence the hence for uniform motion average velocity is equal to instantaneous velocity so how, how <coughs> sorry so how can you say that you see a body is traveling in a straight line it is having 
कंस्टेंट स्पीड ऑफ सिक्सटी किलोमीटर पर आवर सिक्सटी किलोमीटर पर आवर राइट एंड द बॉडी इज ट्रेवलिंग इन स्ट्रेट लाइन सो स्ट्रेट लाइन मीन्स दैट इट इज नॉट चेंजिंग डायरेक्शन इट इज हैविंग ए कंस्टेंट स्पीड मीन्स इट इज नॉट चेंजिंग स्पीड सो देर फॉर यू कैन से दैट द बॉडी इज ट्रेवलिंग विद कंस्टेंट और यूनिफॉर्म वेलासिटी ना इफ यू लुक एट द स्पी स्पीडोमीटर ऑफ द व्हीकल राइट every moment you'll see the speedometer pointer is pointing at 60 km per hour so what would you, what would be the instantaneous velocity now the instantaneous velocity or the instantaneous speed will also be 60 km per hour so that is what the statement means here okay that body moving with uniform velocity means the body is moving with constant speed in a straight line that means unchanging direction in such a case the instantaneous velocity and the average velocity will remain the same or yeah since it is traveling with constant velocity and constant or unchanging direction the average velocity calculation will give you the same result as instantaneous velocity determination okay so thank you i hope you have understood the class and uh, i'll i'll share the note via via the whatsapp group we'll continue the topics in the upcoming classes thank you so much